The history of Nepal is intertwined with the history of the broader Indian subcontinent and the surrounding regions, comprising the areas of South Asia and East Asia. It is a multi-ethnic, multi-racial, multicultural, multi-religious, and multilingual country. The most spoken language of Nepal is Nepali followed by several other ethnic languages. Nepal experienced a struggle for democracy at times in the 20th century and early 21st century. During the 1990s and until 2008, the country was in a civil strife. A peace treaty was signed in 2006 and elections were held in the same year. In a historical vote for the election of the Constituent Assembly, Nepalese parliament voted to oust the monarchy in June 2006. Nepal became a federal republic and was formally renamed the Federal Democratic Republic of Nepal, ending the 200-year-old Shah dynasty. Topic: <laughs> Toponymy In a Lichavi era inscription found in Tistung, the local people have been addressed as the Nepals. Experts are of the opinion that some or all of the inhabitants of Nepal in the ancient period were likely called Nepals, which meant that the word Nepal was used to refer to both the land and its population. These Nepals are considered the progenitors of modern day Nuars. The terms Nepal and Nuar are variations of the same term. Other variants found in medieval texts are Nepar and Nual. The derivation of the word Nepal is also the subject of a number of other theories. NEP are the people that used to be cow herders Gopal who came to the Nepal Valley from the Ganges plain of modern-day India. Combining the two words yields Nepal. The Sanskrit word Nepalaya means, at the foot of the mountains, or abode at the foot. Nepal may be derived from this. The Tibetan word Niampal means, holy land. Nepal may be derived from it. Some inhabitants of northern Nepal came from Tibet, where they herded sheep and produced wool. In Tibetan, ne means, wool, and pal means, house. Thus, Nepal is, house of wool. A popular theory is that Lepcha people used the words ne, holy, and pal, cave, and thus Nepal to describe a, holy cave. According to Buddhist legend, the deity Manjushri drained the water from Nagadaha, a mythical lake that is believed to have filled the Kathmandu Valley. The valley became inhabitable and was ruled by Bhumigupta, a cow herder, who took advice from a sage named Nay. Pala means protector or taking care. So Nepal reflected the name of the sage who took care of the place, according to Nepali scholar Rishikesh Shaha. Early ages Prehistory Prehistoric site of Paleolithic, Mesolithic and Neolithic have been discovered in the Sawalik Hills of Dang district. The earliest inhabitants of Nepal and adjoining areas were people from the Indus Valley Civilization. The Dravidian people whose history predates the onset of the Bronze Age in South Asia around 3300 BC, before the coming of other ethnic groups like the Tibeto-Burmans and Indo-Aryans from across the border. Tarus, people of mixed Dravidian and Austro-Asiatic features are the forest-dwelling natives of the central Terai region of Nepal. The Karat people arrived from Tibet some 2,000 years ago and lived in northern Nepal. Other ethnic groups of Indo-Aryan origin later migrated to southern part of Nepal from India. From the ancient records Nepal was originally inhabited by the Mongoloid people. <inaudible> <inaudible> Legends and ancient times Very little is known about the early history of Nepal. Legends and documented references reach far back to the 30th century BC. Also, the presence of historical sites, e.g., Valmiki Ashram, indicates the presence of Sanatana ancient Hindu culture in parts of Nepal at that period. According to some legendary accounts in the chronicles, the successors of Nepal were the Gopalavamsi, Gopal Bansa or cowherd family, are said to have ruled for some 491 years. They are said to have been followed by the Mahasapalavamsa or buffalo herder dynasty, established by a Rajput named Buhl Singh. Karat dynasty 
The context of Karat's ruling in Nepal before Lichavi dynasty and after Mahispal or Avir dynasty can be found in different manuscripts. Mentioning the area between Sun Kosi and Tama Kosi as their native land, the list of Karati kings is also given in the Gopal genealogy. By defeating the last king of Avir dynasty Buwansing in a battle, Karati king Yalung or Yalambar had taken the regime of the valley under his control. In the Hindu mythological perspective, this event is believed to have taken place in the final phase of Dwaparyug or initial phase of Kaliyug or around the 6th century BC. We can find descriptions of 32, 28 and 29 Karati kings according in Gopal genealogy, language genealogy and rite genealogy respectively. By means of the notices contained in the classics of the East and West, we are assured that Karanti people was forthcoming in their present abode from 2000 to 2500 years back, and that their powers was great and their dominion extensive, reaching possibly at one time to the delta of the Ganges. Lichavi dynasty The kings of Lichavi dynasty originated from Vishali of modern Bihar of India have been found to rule Nepal after the Karat monarchical dynasty. The context that Suryavansi Kshetriyas had established new regime by defeating the Karats can be found in some genealogies and Puranas. It has been written in Gopal genealogy that then, defeating the Karat king with the impact of Suryavanshi, Lishavi dynasty was established in Nepal. Likewise, it has been written in Pashapati Purana that the masters of Vishali established their own regime by confiding Kiratis with sweet words and defeating them in war. Similar contexts can be also found in Himbakkanda. That Purana also mentioned that the masters of Vishali had started ruling in Nepal by defeating Karats. In this way, Lishavi's regime seems to have started in Nepal subsequently after the regime of Karats. However, different genealogies have found to be stating different names of last Karati king. The Lishavi monarchical dynasty was established in Nepal by defeating last Karati king Kigu, according to Gopal genealogy, Galiz, according to language genealogy and Gasti, according to rite genealogy. Topic Simrun dynasty The Simrun, Karnat or Dev dynasty originated with an establishment of a kingdom in 1097 CE headquartered at present-day Simrangar in Bara district. The kingdom controlled the areas we today know as Turhut or Mathila in Nepal and Bihar of India. The rulers of Simrangar are as follows. Nanya Dev 1097-1147 CE Ganga Dev 1147-1187 CE Narsing Dev 1187-1227 CE Ramsing Dev 1227-1285 CE Shaktasing Dev 1285-1295 CE Harasing Dev 1295-1324 CE and 1324 CE, Gyasadan Tughlaq attacked Simrangar and demolished the fort. The remains are still scattered all over the Simrangar region. The king fled northwards into the then Nepal. The son of Harasing Dev, Jagatsing Dev married the widow princess of Bhaktapur Nayak Devi. Thakuri dynasty Rule of the Thakuri kings The Thakuri dynasty was a Rajput dynasty. After Aramudi, who is mentioned in the Kashmirian Chronicle, the Rajatarangini of Kalhana 1150 CE, many Thakuri kings ruled over parts of the country up to the middle of the 12th century CE. Raghava Deva is said to have founded a ruling dynasty in 879 CE, when the Lishavi rule came to an end. To commemorate this important event, Raghu Deva started the Nepal era which began on 20 October 879 CE. After Amshavarma, who ruled from 605 CE onward, the Thakuris had lost power and they could regain it only in 869 CE. <laughs> Ganakama Deva After the death of King Raghava Dev, many Thakuri kings ruled southern Nepal up to the middle of the 12th century CE. During that period, Ganakama Deva was one of the famous kings. He ruled from 949 to 994 CE. 
During his rule, a big wooden house was built out of one single tree which was called Kasthamandapa, from which the name of the capital, Kathmandu, is derived. Ganakama Deva founded a town called Kantipur, the modern Kathmandu. It was also Ganakama Deva who started the Indra Jatra festival. He repaired the temple that lies to the northern part of the temple of Pashapatinath. He introduced Krishna Jatra and Lok Jatra as well. He also performed Kotihoma. Topic: <laughs> Successors of Ganakama Dev. Bola Deva succeeded Ganakama Deva. The next ruler was Laxmikama Deva who ruled from 1024 to 1040 CE. He built Laxmi Vihara and introduced the custom of worshipping a virgin girl as Kumari. Then, Vijayakama Deva, the son of Laxmikama, became the Nepalese king. Vijayakama Deva was the last ruler of this dynasty. He introduced the worship of the Naga and Vasuki. After his death, the Thakuri clan of Nuakot occupied the throne of Nepal. <laughs> Nuakot Thakuri kings Bhaskara Deva, a Thakuri from Nuakot, succeeded Vijayakama Deva and established Nuakot Thakuri rule. He is said to have built Navabahal and Hemavarna Vihara. After Bhaskara Deva, four kings of this line ruled over the country. They were Bala Deva, Padma Deva, Nagarjuna Deva and Shankara Deva. Shankara Deva was the most illustrious ruler of this dynasty. He established the image of Shantasvara Mahadeva and Manahara Bhagavati. The custom of pasting the pictures of Nagas and Vasuki on the doors of houses on the day of Nagapanchami was introduced by him. During his time, the Buddhists wreaked vengeance on the Hindu Brahmins especially the followers of Shaivism for the harm they had received earlier from Shankaracharya. Shankara Deva tried to pacify the Brahmins harassed by the Buddhists. <laughs> Suryavansi the Solar Dynasty. Bhama Deva, a descendant of Amshavarma, defeated Shankar Deva in 1080 CE. He suppressed the Nuakot Thankoras with the help of nobles and restored the old solar dynasty rule in Nepal for the second time. Harsha Deva, the successor of Bama Deva was a weak ruler. There was no unity among the nobles and they asserted themselves in their respective spheres of influence. Taking that opportunity Nanya Deva, a Karnat dynasty king, attacked Nepal from Simrangar. In reply army of Nepal defended, won the battle and successfully protected Nepal from a foreign invasion. Shivadeva III After Harsha Deva, Shivadeva III ruled from 1099 to 1126 CE. He was a brave and powerful king. He founded the town of Kirtipur and roofed the temple of Pashapatinath with gold. He introduced 25 paisa coins. He also constructed wells, canals, and tanks at different places. After Sivadeva III, Mahendra Deva, Mana Deva, Narendra Deva II, Ananda Deva, Rudra Deva, Amrita Deva, Ratna Deva II, Sumsvara Deva, Ganakama Deva II, Lakmakama Deva III and Vijayakama Deva II ruled Nepal in quick succession. Historians differ about the rule of several kings and their respective times. After the fall of the Thakuri dynasty, a new dynasty was founded by Aradeva or Ari Mala, popularly known as the Mala dynasty. Topic. Mala dynasty Early Mala rule started with Ari Mala in the 12th century. Over the next two centuries, his kingdom expanded widely, into much of South Asia and Western Tibet, before disintegrating into small principalities, which later became known as the Bays kingdoms. Jayasthiti Mala, with whom commences the later Mala dynasty of the Kathmandu Valley, began to reign at the end of the 18th century. King Prithvi Narayan Shah captured Kathmandu at the day of Indra Jatra festival. Mala dynasty was the longest ruling dynasty, ruling from the 12th century to the 18th century about 600 years of ruling period. This era in the valley is eminent for the various social and economic reforms such as the Sanskritization of the valley people, new methods of land measurement and allocation etc. In this era, new art and architecture was introduced. 
The monuments in Kathmandu Valley which are listed by UNESCO these days were built during Mala rule. In the 14th century, before Kathmandu was divided into three princely states, Araniko went to China upon the request of Abhaya Mala for representing the skill of art and architecture, and he introduced pagoda style of architecture to China and subsequently, whole Asia. Yaksha Mala, the grandson of Jayasthiti Mala, ruled the Kathmandu Valley until almost the end of the 15th century. After his demise, the valley was divided into three independent valley kingdoms Kathmandu, Bhaktapur, and Patan in about 1484 CE. This division led the Mala rulers into internecine clashes and wars for territorial and commercial gains. Mutually debilitating wars gradually weakened them, that facilitated conquest of the Kathmandu Valley by King Prithvi Narayan Shah of Gorkha. The last Mala rulers were Jaya Prakasha Mala, Tiha Narasinga Mala and Ranjit Mala of Kathmandu, Patan, and Bhaktapur respectively. Shah dynasty, unification of Nepal Prithvi Narayan Shah c. with whom we move into the modern period of Nepal's history, was the ninth-generation descendant of Dravya Shah the founder of the ruling house of Gorkha. Prithvi Narayan Shah succeeded his father Nara Bupal Shah to the throne of Gorkha in 1743 CE. King Prithvi Narayan Shah was quite aware of the political situation of the Valley Kingdoms as well as of the Bays and Shobai's principalities. He foresaw the need for capturing the small principalities as an urgent condition for survival in the future and set himself to the task accordingly. His assessment of the situation among the hill principalities was correct, and the principalities were subjugated fairly easily. King Prithvi Narayan Shah's victory march began with the conquest of Nuakot, which lies between Kathmandu and Gorkha, in 1744. After Nuakot, he occupied strategic points in the hills surrounding the Kathmandu Valley. The valley's communications with the outside world were thus cut off. The occupation of the Kuti Pass in about 1756 stopped the valley's trade with Tibet. Finally, Prithvi Narayan Shah entered the valley. After the victory of Kirtipur, King Jaya Prakash Mala of Kathmandu sought help from the British and so the then East India Company sent a contingent of soldiers under Captain Kinlik in 1767. The British force was defeated at Sinduli by King Prithvi Narayan Shah's army. This defeat of the British completely shattered the hopes of King Jaya Prakash Mala. The capture of Kathmandu September 25, 1768, was very dramatic. As the people of Kathmandu were celebrating the festival of Indrajatra, Prithvi Narayan Shah and his men marched into the city. A throne was put on the palace courtyard for the king of Kathmandu. Prithvi Narayan Shah sat on the throne. Jaya Prakash Mala somehow managed to escape with his life and took asylum in Patan. When Patan was too captured a few weeks later, both Jaya Prakash Mala and the king of Patan, Tej Narsingh Mala took refuge in Bhaktapur, which was also captured after some time. Thus, the Kathmandu Valley was conquered by King Prithvi Narayan Shah and Kathmandu became the capital of the modern Nepal by 1769. In 1794, troops of Prithvi Narayan Shah has made a complete conquered on Nuakot which they were commanded by Baraj Tapa, but they were badly defeated, largely because of the following reasons. Burial of Tulsi River Lack of arms and ammunition Lack of trained soldiers Lack of detailed research and plans King Prithvi started unifying parts of Bays Raja in the Rapti region in around 1760 CE. By 1763, Tulsipur Dang Raja fell and by 1775 CE, Chohan Raja Nawal Singh of House of Tulsipur was completely defeated. After losing his northern hill territories to King Prithvi, Chohan Raja Nawal Singh was forced to move to his southern territories currently Tulsipur, Balarampur in modern-day India and ruled as one of the largest talukdar of Oudh. King Prithvi Narayan Shah was successful in bringing together diverse religio-ethnic groups under one nation. He was a true nationalist in his outlook and was in favour of adopting a closed-door policy with regard to the British. Not only his social and economic views guided the country's socio-economic course for a long time, his use of the imagery, a yam between two boulders in Nepal's geopolitical context, formed the principal guideline of the country's foreign policy for future centuries. 
But in the modern days, this saying is to be modified as a link between two giant countries and Nepal can be able to get benefit from both countries. <laughs> Kingdom of Nepal Gorkha rule After decades of rivalry between the medieval kingdoms, modern Nepal was unified in the latter half of the 18th century, when Prithvi Narayan Shah, the ruler of the small principality of Gorkha, formed a unified country from a number of independent hill high states. Prithvi Narayan Shah dedicated himself at an early age to the conquest of the Kathmandu Valley and the creation of a single state, which he achieved in 1768. The country was frequently called the Gorkha Kingdom. It is a misconception that the Gorkhali took their name from the Gorkha region of Nepal. Actually, the region was given its name after the Gorkhali had established their control of these areas. After Shah's death, the Shah dynasty began to expand their kingdom into much of South Asia. Between 1788 and 1791, during the Sino Nepalese War, Nepal invaded Tibet and robbed Tashilhunpo Monastery in Shigatse. Alarmed, the Qianlong Emperor of the Chinese Qing dynasty appointed Fukongan commander in chief of the Tibetan campaign. Fukongan signed treaty to protect his troops, thus attaining a draw. The draw was later converted to victory by Nepali forces sent on commands of PM Young Bahadur Rana. After 1800, the heirs of Prithvi Narayan Shah proved unable to maintain firm political control over Nepal. A period of internal turmoil followed. Rivalry between Nepal and the British East India Company over the princely states bordering Nepal and British India eventually led to the Anglo-Nepalese War 1814 in which Nepal suffered a heavy defeat. The Treaty of Sugauli was signed in 1816, ceding large parts of the Nepalese-controlled territories to the British. Rana rules. Young Bahadur Rana was the first ruler from this dynasty. Rana rulers were titled Shri Teen and Maharaja, whereas Shah kings were Shri Panch and Maharajdaraj. Both the Rana dynasty and Shah dynasty are Rajput caste in the Hindu tradition. Young Bahadur codified laws and modernized the state's bureaucracy. In the coup d'état of 1885, the nephews of Young Bahadur and Ranadip Singh murdered Ranadip Singh and the sons of Young Bahadur, stole the name of Young Bahadur and took control of Nepal. Nine Rana rulers took the hereditary office of Prime Minister. All were styled self-proclaimed Maharaja of Lamjing and Kaski. The Rana regime, a tightly centralized autocracy, pursued a policy of isolating Nepal from external influences. This policy helped Nepal maintain its national independence during the British colonial era, but it also impeded the country's economic development and modernization. The Ranas were staunchly pro-British and assisted the British during the Indian Rebellion of 1857 and later in both world wars. At the same time, although Chinese claims, the British supported Nepalese independence at the beginning of the 20th century, in December 1923, Britain and Nepal formally signed a Treaty of Perpetual Peace and Friendship", superseding the Sugauli Treaty of 1816 and upgrading the British resident in Kathmandu to an envoy. Slavery was abolished in Nepal in 1924 under premiership of Chandra Shamsher Jang Bahadur Rana. Following the German invasion of Poland, the Kingdom of Nepal declared war on Germany on September 4, 1939. Once Japan entered the conflict, 16 battalions of the Royal Nepalese Army fought on the Burmese front. In addition to military support, Nepal contributed guns, equipment as well as hundreds of thousands of pounds of tea, sugar and raw materials such as timber to the Allied war effort. Revolution of 1951 The revolution of 1951 started when dissatisfaction against the family rule of the Ranas had started emerging from among the few educated people, who had studied in various South Asian schools and colleges, and also from within the Ranas, many of whom were marginalized within the ruling Rana hierarchy. Many of these Nepalese in exile had actively taken part in the Indian independence struggle and wanted to liberate Nepal as well from the autocratic Rana occupation. 
The political parties such as the Prajaparishad and Nepali Congress were already formed in exile by leaders such as B. P. Koirala, Ganesh Man Singh, Subarna Sumshur Rana, Krishna Prasad Bhattarai, Garija Prasad Koirala, and many other patriotic minded Nepalis who urged the military and popular political movement in Nepal to overthrow the autocratic Rana regime. Thus Nepali Congress formed a military wing Nepali Congress's Liberation Army among the prominent martyrs to die for the cause, executed at the hands of the Ranas, were Dharma Bhakta Mathama, Shukaraj Shastri, Gangalal Shrestha, and Dasharath Chand who were the members of Praja Parisad. This turmoil culminated in King Tribhuvan, a direct descendant of Prithvi Narayan Shah, fleeing from his palace prison in 1950, to India, touching off an armed revolt against the Rana administration. This eventually ended in the return of the Shah family to power and the appointment of a non-Rana as Prime Minister according to a tripartite agreement signed called Delhi Compromise. A period of quasi-constitutional rule followed, during which the monarch, assisted by the leaders of fledgling political parties, governed the country. During the 1950s, efforts were made to frame a constitution for Nepal that would establish a representative form of government, based on a British model. There was a ten member cabinet under Prime Minister Mohan Shumshur having five members of Rana and five of Nepali Congress Party. This government drafted a constitution called Interim Government Act, which was the first constitution of Nepal. But this government doomed as Ranas and congressmen were never on good terms. So, on 1 Mansir 2008 BS, the king formed a new government of 14 ministers, which was also dissolved. Later on Sherawan 2009 BS king formed five members councillors government which was also failed. <laughs> <laughs> Royal coup by King Mahendra Declaring parliamentary democracy a failure, King Mahendra carried out a royal coup 18 months later, in 1960. He dismissed the elected Koirala government, declared that a «partyless» system would govern Nepal, and promulgated another new constitution on December 16, 1960. Subsequently, the elected Prime Minister, members of Parliament and hundreds of democratic activists were arrested. In fact, this trend of arrest of political activists and democratic supporters continued for the entire 30-year period of partyless panchayati system under King Mahendra and then his son, King Barendra. The new constitution established a partyless system of panchayats councils which King Mahendra considered to be a democratic form of government, closer to Nepalese traditions. As a pyramidal structure, progressing from village assemblies to the panchayat system constitutionalized the absolute power of the monarchy and kept the king as head of state with sole authority over all governmental institutions, including the cabinet council of ministers and the parliament. One state one language became the national policy in an effort to carry out state unification, uniting various ethnic and regional groups into a singular Nepali nationalist bond. The Gan Farka Avayan, launched in 1967, was one of the main rural development programs of the Panchayat system. King Mahendra was succeeded by his 27-year-old son, King Barendra, in 1972. Amid student demonstrations and anti-regime activities in 1979, King Barendra called for a national referendum to decide on the nature of Nepal's government, either the continuation of the Panchayat system along with democratic reforms or the establishment of a multi-party system. The referendum was held in May 1980, and the panchayat system won a narrow victory. The king carried out the promised reforms, including selection of the prime minister by the Rastriya panchayat. Multi-party parliament People in rural areas had expected that their interests would be better represented after the adoption of parliamentary democracy in 1990. The Nepali Congress with the support of Alliance of Leftist Parties decided to launch a decisive agitational movement, Jana Andolan, which forced the monarchy to accept constitutional reforms and to establish a multi-party parliament. In May 1991, Nepal held its first parliamentary elections in nearly 50 years. The Nepali Congress won 110 of the 205 seats and formed the first elected government in 32 years. Civil strikes 
In 1992, in a situation of economic crisis and chaos, with spiraling prices as a result of the implementation of changes in policy of the new Congress government, the radical left stepped up their political agitation. A joint People's Agitation Committee was set up by the various groups. A general strike was called for April 6. Violent incidents began to occur on the evening before the strike. The Joint People's Agitation Committee had called for a 30-minute lights out in the capital, and violence erupted outside Beer Hospital when activists tried to enforce the lights out. At dawn on April 6, clashes between strike activists and police, outside a police station in Polchak Patton, left two activists dead. Later in the day, a mass rally of the Agitation Committee at Tundahal in the capital Kathmandu was attacked by police forces. As a result, riots broke out and the Nepal Telecommunications Building was set on fire. Police opened fire at the crowd, killing several persons. The Human Rights Organization of Nepal estimated that 14 persons, including several onlookers, had been killed in police firing. When promised land reforms failed to appear, people in some districts started to organize to enact their own land reform and to gain some power over their lives in the face of usurious landlords. However, this movement was repressed by the Nepali government, in Operation Romeo and Operation Kilo Sara II, which took the lives of many of the leading activists of the struggle. As a result, many witnesses to this repression became radicalized. <inaudible> <inaudible> Nepalese Civil War In March 1997, the Communist Party of Nepal Maoist started a bid to replace the parliamentary monarchy with a People's New Democratic Republic, through a Maoist revolutionary strategy known as the People's War, which led to the Nepalese Civil War. Led by Dr. Baburam Bhattarai and Pushpa Kamal Dahal also known as Prashanda, the insurgency began in five districts in Nepal, Rolpa, Rukam, Jajarkot, Gorkha, and Sinduli. The Communist Party of Nepal Maoist established a provisional people's government at the district level in several locations. On June 1, 2001, Prince Dipendra, went on a shooting spree, assassinating nine members of the royal family, including King Birendra and Queen Ashwarya, before shooting himself. Due to his survival, he temporarily became king before dying of his wounds, after which Prince Ganendra HMG King Birendra's brother inherited the throne, as per tradition. Meanwhile, the rebellion escalated, and in October 2002 the king temporarily deposed the government and took complete control of it. A week later he reappointed another government, but the country was still very unstable. In the face of unstable governments and a siege on the Kathmandu Valley in August 2004, popular support for the monarchy began to wane. On February 1, 2005, Ganendra dismissed the entire government and assumed full executive powers, declaring a state of emergency to quash the revolution. Politicians were placed under house arrest, phone and internet lines were cut, and freedom of the press was severely curtailed. The king's new regime made little progress in his stated aim to suppress the insurgents. Municipal elections in February 2006 were described by the European Union as a backward step for democracy, as the major parties boycotted the election and some candidates were forced to run for office by the army. In April 2006 strikes and street protests in Kathmandu forced the king to reinstate the parliament. A seven-party coalition resumed control of the government and stripped the king of most of his powers. As of 15 January 2007, Nepal was governed by a unicameral legislature under an interim constitution. On December 24, 2007, seven parties, including the former Maoist rebels and the ruling party, agreed to abolish the monarchy and declare Nepal the Federal Republic. In the elections held on 10 April 2008, the Maoists secured a simple majority, with the prospect of forming a government to rule the proposed Republic of Nepal. <laughs> Federal Democratic Republic. On May 28, 2008, the newly elected Constituent Assembly declared Nepal the Federal Democratic Republic, abolishing the 240-year-old monarchy. The motion for the abolition of the monarchy was carried by a huge majority. Out of 564 members present in the Assembly, 560 voted for the motion while four members voted against it. On June 11, 2008, ex-King Ganendra left the palace. 
Ram Baron Yadav of the Nepali Congress became the first president of the Federal Democratic Republic of Nepal on July 23, 2008. Similarly, the Constituent Assembly elected Pushpa Kamal Dahal popularly known as Prashanda of the Unified Communist Party of Nepal Maoist as the first Republican Prime Minister on August 15, 2008, favoring him over Sher Bahadur Duba of the Nepali Congress Party. After failing to draft a constitution before the deadline, the existing Constituent Assembly was dissolved the 28th of May 2012 and a new interim government 2013-2014 formed under the prime ministership of the Chief Justice of Nepal, Supreme Court Judge Keel Raj Regmi. In the Constituent Assembly election of November 2013, the Nepali Congress won the largest share of the votes but failed to get a majority. The Communist Party of Nepal Unified Marxist-Leninist CPN UML and the Nepali Congress negotiated to form a consensus government and Sushil Koirala of the Nepali Congress was elected as prime minister February 2014 with support from the CPN UML Topic <laughs> <laughs> Protests over the Constitution of 2015 Minority ethnic groups like Madeshi and Taru have protested vigorously against the constitution which came into effect on September 20, 2015. They point out that their concerns have not been addressed and there are few explicit protections for their ethnic groups in the document. At least 56 civilians and 11 police died in clashes over the draft constitution. In response to the Madeshi protests, India suspended vital supplies to landlocked Nepal, citing insecurity and violence in border areas. It has been alleged that India's denial of petroleum and medicine to Nepal constituted a violation of human rights. Then Prime Minister of Nepal, Ali, publicly accused India for the blockade calling the act more inhuman than war. India has denied enacting the blockade. <laughs> See also